Now let's talk about turbulence and airflow. While these are higher level concepts, it's important to understand the basics so you can maximize the hood's performance. This is probably a good place for an analogy. Let's compare the fume hood to a car. The car and the fume hood are both complex mechanical systems. As an operator, you are responsible for how the car is used. But as a driver, we would not expect you to fix the mechanical issues. But we would expect you to know when the auto wasn't performing correctly and be able to convey the symptoms to the mechanic. The same is true with the fume hood. You should understand enough about how it should be performing to report issues to those responsible for its mechanical performance. First, let's acknowledge that generally we can't see air. If we could, much of what we'd be talking about would be merely common sense. It's important to know that air and water behave the same. Both follow the same physical laws of fluid dynamics. Air is a fluid. Think about a major water leak in your house. Inches of water everywhere, in every room. You need to squeegee it all out. Think how difficult it is to move that water around and get it to go where you want it to. The same is true with air. An engineer once told me managing airflow was like herding frogs. Mechanical ventilation and fume hood performance are anything but simple. But having a general understanding of what the air is doing allows you to do things that will make the hood work better. And to spot things that may be impacting its performance that need attention by the facilities or maintenance people. Just like water running downhill, air flows from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. In a fume hood, the low pressure area is the plenum. The plenum is the space between the baffles and the back wall. There is an opening at the top of the plenum where the ductwork is attached. Then there's a fan, usually on the roof, that creates the lowest pressure for the entire system. You could say that the fan is sucking the air through the hood. Airflow is designed to flow from clean to dirty areas. The clean air from the corridor flows into the lab. The lab air flows into the hood through the sash opening, then into the plenum. Then the ductwork to the exhaust fan where it's usually exhausted out of the building. Any imbalance can cause the direction of the flow to change. Managing the room pressurization is a real challenge to fume hood performance. Pressure changes can reverse flow, which can result in unsafe conditions in the lab. In a properly designed and balanced lab, the lab is under slight negative pressure compared to the hallway. If you crack the door, you usually can feel the air rushing in. The fume chamber has to be lower in pressure than the room to draw the air into the plenum. While this all looks simple on paper, it's anything but simple in reality. Maintaining proper balance is critical to the hood safe performance. Airflow is typically not something the user can control, but it is necessary to have a general understanding to verify that the hood is working properly. But there are some components of airflow that the user can control. Let's say that everything is balanced and working properly. There's air entering the fume chamber through the sash and over and under the lower airfoil. Given the pressure difference, the air is trying to flow across the work surface to the lower slot in the baffle. But if there's objects directly in, on the work surface or in front of the baffles, you disrupt that airflow. Think of air as if it were water flowing down a river, smooth and calm. Now put some boulders in the river and the smooth flowing water turns into rapids. Objects in the hood do exactly the same thing to the airflow. These objects can create enough turbulence to cause the hood to lose containment, 
which could contaminate the lab air and create hazards for the users, the equipment, and the work. As a user, there are things you can do to improve performance. Don't block the baffle openings. Keep objects away from the sidewalls. Elevate objects so they don't sit directly on the worktop. This allows the air to flow under them on its way to the baffles. Work six inches behind the sash to prevent chemicals from being drawn out. Move slowly and deliberately within the hood and when you remove objects. All of these things must be adhered to for the fume hood to have a chance of keeping you and your colleagues safe.